implemented type system. But there is still one issue with the system. That is, it exists in form more like a specification or a logical relation where uh, any of the three could be inputs and any of three can be output. And when it worked in terms of the uh, type inference, we rather want to have something like we take the type environment gamma and the program E as input and produce a type as an output. And we have to turn it in a, into a variant of this um, type system. And pursuing this direction leads us to a algorithm called algorithm W. So algorithm W also um, formulated in a form of a judgment for simplicity. Of course, you will see um, in the literature review there are uh, some other so-called explanation or interpretation, interpretation to write more like a functional style. But for now, we just treat it that um, the gamma is always the input, and the program expression is also an input, and then it the output will be the type, and then a substitution. So again, there are two inputs, which is the type environment, the program, and there are two output. One is the t uh, type, the other one will be the substitution. And to differentiate it from the hidden manner type system, we use a subscript W over here. So the main idea is basically to eliminate the need to have the gen rule and as well as the in rule because these two rules are non-syntax directed. They can happen anytime, anywhere. It's uh, easier for us to create a proof, but it's difficult for us to run it as an algorithm. So the main idea here is to to um, embed the ins rule as a function in the var rule, and we would like to uh, fuse or actually embed the gen rule as another function in the let rule. So let's go through them in detail. Given the program is a variable, we would like to look it up in this type environment gamma. And let's say we find this type notation is sigma, potentially is a type scheme, might be polymorphic. So then we apply the ins functions to it to make it less polymorphic, hopefully we produce a simple type T and we output the T as its infer type and we leave a identity or empty type substitutions as the result. For the apps rule, we would like to uh, infer a type of the uh, lambda expressions. So to do that, we first would need to introduce a um, type variable alpha one here which doesn't exist before or not doesn't exist in the in the type environment gamma and we we add the, the binding or the type notation x has type alpha 1 in this new type environment under which we try to infer the body of the lambda expression has type s and hopefully eventually we, we will also produce some type substitutions psi then as a result um, the type of this lambda expression would have type from alpha 1 to s but of course uh, if the substitution output by the uh, premise here be able to ground some uh, extra type variable here we would like to apply greedily so we apply psi to this um, infer type and we return psi as the type substitution as well for the application rule we look at um, the a function application with from e1 applying to e2 so first we would like to infer under the type environment gamma e1 so have some type t1 and with some type substitution um, psi1 and then as a next step we need to greedily apply the psi1 into the gamma hopefully we already ground some uh, variable or free variable in gamma and then under which we try to infer um, the e 2s type as T2, that would give us another substitution called Psi2. Next, we need to invent or need to actually generate a new um, temporary var type variable called Alpha3. So, and this Alpha3 will serve as the return type of our, uh, our E1 expression because E1, since it's used as a function, so it, in a way that T1 must of shape so go from T2 to some alpha 3 and in order to um, to generate a solution to this or in a way that to find a way to unify these two types we first need to apply side 2 to T1 hopefully it will ground it further 
and then we apply another function called MGU stand for most general unifier which applied to the psi2 applied to t1 and the t2 which is of the type of e2 which is this is the actual argument type right arrow alpha3 so this is a new type variable that denote the result type and hopefully psi3 will ground some of the type variable let's say including alpha3 here so as a result um, the type of the whole expression will be psi3 applied to alpha3 and then the substitutions that we want to return will be the composition of psi1, psi2 and psi3. The cons rule is straightforward. The let rule, like I mentioned earlier, had to use a, another function called gen, which is serve the purpose of like generalization. So uh, we first need to uh, infer a type of the right hand side of the let binding E1 and try to infer the type T1 and which produced a type substitution Psi1 and hopefully Psi1 can ground some of the type variable in our type environment gamma okay. and we try to extend this new type environment with a, the variable X and with the type T1 but of course um, in the presence of uh, lab polymorphism we, would, we do want to promote it to make it more polymorphic not just T1 so to do that we will apply the gen functions taking in the uh, type environment and as well as the infer type t1 from the, for, uh, the earlier step and hopefully this will give us a more polymorphic type for x and then under which we're going to infer the body of the lead binding or a lead expression e2 that will give us some type t2 and producing a type substitution psi2 as a result, the entire expression will have type T2 and the uh, type substitution to be output will be composing Psi1 with Psi2. Of helper functions or being extended defined as follow. For example, we can apply a type substitution to a uh, type environment by basically applying the type substitution to all the right hand side of all the uh, variable and type pairs in gamma. For substitution um, composition, we basically um, first apply um, all the possible substitution from uh, from psi one, and we apply psi two to all the um, all the t inside, and then union with all the part all the substitution that in psi two that doesn't exist in psi one. The instance rules, or the instance function has two parts. The first part deal with a simple type we just return the type itself the second part says that if the input is a type scheme then it would try to use a new var function to generate a new variable that doesn't exist anywhere before and we replace the alpha with this new variable beta 1 okay and and we further um, instantiate the the body of the type scheme using the uh, ins rule recursively. For generalizations, um, we need to take in a type environment and a simple type t and then we just look for some uh, free type variable that is in t but not in the uh, type environment gamma. We call them alpha and then we promote them as the uh, input variable of the type scheme. Notice that um, even though um, the, the type variable generated by the new var command or um, those exist pre-exist in the in the, uh, the uh, type scheme, they are the same. But for now, just for the ease of reasoning, those who are gener generated by the new var, I often put it with a subscript, where those in the type scheme does not have a subscript. And the reason for that is that I would like to use a subscript to to indicate that this type variable is the temporary variable will be used for unification and they will be eliminated via the unifications whereas the variable that exists in the type scheme they will not be affected via the unification we'll see that and discuss that shortly while we go through the example function the mgu which takes in two um, type scheme 
and try to produce a type substitutions. So the idea is very simple. So in case we have a type variable alpha and try to unify it with t, we simply generate a um, substitution that replaces all the alpha by t. And if we try to um, unify t and alpha, same thing, we just replace all the alpha with t. And if we try to unify two um, basic type or primitive type, they must be the same. If we try to unify two uh, function types, we then we first produce a uh, substitution by unifying t1 and t3, which is the input type. And that will produce us a substitution psi1. Next, we have to greedily apply uh, psi1 to t2 and t4, which is the result types, and uh, perform a unification to, the, to it. And that will generate us a new uh, type substitution called psi2. As the result, we compose psi2 with psi1. Other than any of these cases, we will generate an error, unification failed. 